Action system. Today we're gonna build the basics of our action system, which is going to help us decide which action we wanna execute when we do a right click or a left click on the mouse. And the idea behind that is to be able to switch action depending on the state of the game. So let's say, for example, if you want to select a spell to cast it, you're going to do a different action than if you want to move a unit on the grid. So let's get to it. So in Unreal, the first step is to create a blueprint class, which is going to be the parent of all our actions. So here in the content browser, I just created a new folder, which I named actions, and it is in the same folder as my player action that we created in the previous video. Then inside this folder, I'm creating a new blueprint class of type actor, which I name BP underscore action. Then I open it. And here I created a simple function, which I named execute action, passing it an index as input. The index is of type int point, like every other index we have right now. And we're not gonna add any code in here, because this function right here is only going to be the entry point for all the child blueprint class that are going to derive from this blueprint action. So the parent is not gonna do anything, but all the children are going to execute different code depending on what we want the action to accomplish. And the reason why we are passing it the grid index as input, well, it's because every action is gonna need to know where to execute itself. And this is why I created a new variable of type BP player action, which I named player actions. And I also made sure to check the instance editable checkbox and the expose on spawn checkbox also. That way it's going to be simpler to assign a BP player action when we create this action. And that's it for this blueprint, we can close it. And now we're going to create a child blueprint of this class. So you can right click on BP action and click on create child blueprint class. And for the name, I'm simply naming it action underscore select tile. And actually, since we're going to have multiple types of action and multiple action for each type, I'm creating a new folder, which I named grid. And I'm going to move action underscore select tile inside it. Move here. And we can now open the child blueprint. And here on the left in our functions, I will click on override right here. And then I'm gonna override the execute action function that we created in the parent class, right here. Since the parent doesn't execute any code, we can simply delete the parent call that we have right here. And this is where we're gonna add the select tile logic. But first, we're gonna need a new variable in our BP player actions. So I'm gonna go back in entry and open the BP player actions. And here, I simply duplicated the hover tile variable and named it selected tile, which is also an int point. We can compile and go back in the action select tile. And here, since it's only possible to select one tile at a time, we're gonna start by comparing the index that we receive as input and the index that we currently have selected. That way we're gonna know if the tile is different or the same. If the indexes are different, we're gonna start by removing the state that we previously added on the previously selected tile. Then we're gonna update the selected tile in the player action based on the index that we received as input. And finally, we simply add the selected state to the selected tile that we just selected. But here, what do we do if the currently selected index is the same as the index that we receive as input? Well, since it's only possible to select one index at a time, I'm thinking that we probably can deselect it in the case that both index are the same, because the user just click on the same index as the tile that was already selected. So we're gonna start by removing the index from the previously selected tile, and then we're gonna set an invalid index to the selected tile in the player actions, which is the same thing that we did for the over tile when the player was not hovering any tile. And that's it for this blueprint. We can compile it and close it. So back in the BP player action, we're gonna replace the code that we did in a previous video to select the tile with the left mouse and right mouse buttons. And to do that, we're gonna need two new variables. Both are gonna be of type BP action, which is the type of all the actions we're gonna execute. And the first one, I named it the selected action underscore left click because it's gonna be the action we're gonna execute when we do a left mouse button. And the second one is the same thing, selected action underscore right click because it's gonna be the action we're gonna execute when we do a right mouse button. So here we can remove the code that we did in a previous video and we can replace it by this. So when we do a left mouse button, we're gonna check if we have a selected action for the left click, and if it is the case, we're gonna execute it. And the same thing for the right mouse button, we're checking if we have a selected action for the right click and execute it if it's the case. And actually, if you are clicking super fast, it's possible that the over tile is not updated when you click on the mouse. So we're going to call it before calling the execute action, that way the over tile right here is always going to be updated. So the next step is to set those two variables, so I'm just gonna create a new function to do that. I named my function set selected actions, passing it to two BP action class references, one for the left action and one for the right action. 
To have a class reference as variable type, you can first start by searching for BP action, which is the blueprint that you want, and then pass your mouse over the BP action and select a class reference right here. That way you're gonna have a class and not an object. Here, the first thing I added is a sequence because we're gonna start by processing the left action and then we're gonna do the same thing for the right action right here. So we're gonna start with the left click. So the first step is to get the left click and check if it is valid. So if we already add an action that was selected, it's going to be valid. And if it's the case, we're gonna destroy it because we wanna cancel that action. And then we're gonna empty the value of selected action left click like so. Now that we canceled and destroyed the previously selected action, we're gonna check if the new selected action class that we received as input is valid. And if it is the case, we're gonna use it to spawn a new actor of this class. The transform doesn't really matter. For the collision handling override, we're gonna use always spawn ignore collision. And we're gonna make sure to pass itself as player actions. And then we're gonna use the return of this function to set the selected action left click. Now that we're done with the left click, we're gonna do the same thing for the right click. So we're gonna copy all those nodes and paste them at the bottom. We're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna check if the selected action was valid. If it's the case, we destroy it and set it to null. And then we're gonna check if the action we received as input is valid. If it's the case, we spawn the actor and set the selected action right click right here. Okay, so now we did a bunch of code. So we're just gonna take a little bit of time to test and see if it works. So I'm gonna go back in the event graph. And in the begin play, I'm going to call the set selected actions function, passing it action select tile for both left click and right click because we don't have any other action right now. And now I will compile, go back in entry and press play. And now if I click on my tiles, it selects them the same way it did before, that's great. And I can also do it with the right click. If I click on a tile that was already selected, it unselects it instead of selecting it a second time. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. Good, we can now stop. Okay, now we're gonna create a button in the debug menu to select which type of action we wanna execute. So I'm gonna go in my debug menu folder and create a new folder, which I'm gonna name actions. And inside the folder, I'm going to create a new widget, but actually I'm gonna start with the widget that already exists. So I'm gonna go in my widgets and copy the button console command. So I'm gonna drag it and drop it on top of the action and choose copy here. And then I rename the new widget for button underscore action. I right click on the folder and fix up the redirectors. Then I can open the widget. In here, I started by renaming my component. So button underscore action and text underscore action. Then in the graph, I'm deleting the part that executes a console command when I click on the button, like so. And then I change the name of my variable for text instead of console command. Then in the event construct, I'm getting access to the player action that is currently in the world by doing a get actor of class and setting it into a variable. And the next thing we want to do is to be able to call this set selected action when we click on the button, passing it the left action and the right action that we want to use. So I'm just going to promote both of them into variable. I'll right click on them and promote to variable, promote to variable. Then I rename them for left click action and right click action. And I make sure to make them instance editable by clicking the little eye on the right side here. And since I want this button to be a toggle, the same way we did for the selected tile, the first thing I'm gonna do when the user click on the button is to compare if the currently selected action is the same as the action we wanna set. And here I'm only comparing with the left click action because both the left click and the right click action are going to be set at the same time. So I don't think we need to compare both of them. So if both classes are the same, it means that the action is already selected and we wanna cancel it. And we can do that by calling the set selected action and passing it nothing for the left action and right action. Here you can see that my dropdown are set to none right here. And if they are not equal, well, we wanna select the new action. So we're gonna pass it the left click action and the right click action that were set on this button. And that's it for this button for now. So I'm just gonna compile and save it. And then I'm gonna go back in entry, go back in my debug menu and in my tabs, and I'm gonna open the tab grid. We're gonna add this button inside it. And here we're gonna create a new category for the actions, the same thing we did for the environment, grid generation and debug. So I'm gonna select the border around the environment and duplicate it. Then I'm gonna drag it from the bottom to the top to make it first, and I'm gonna expand it and rename all my variables. And that's how it looks. I renamed my text and my expandable area, and I also changed the text to be actions instead of environment. Then I'm gonna delete the combo box because we're not gonna need it. And instead, I'm gonna go in my user created widget, take my button and drop it into the vertical box. Then I selected my button and I added a little bit of padding. So to in padding, I changed the default text to be select tile instead of stat FPS, I think it was. 
and then I set this left click selected action to be select tile, action select tile. I didn't put anything for right click selected action. Now if we compile, save and go play, here since we are able to select tile by default, we are able to select the tiles and we have our new buttons on the left. If we click on the button, now we should not be able to select the tile anymore, which is the case. And if I select the button again, I should be able to select tile again. Perfect. But now it's not really obvious if we are able to select tiles or not, so we're just gonna add a little bit of color on the button, so it's easier to see if we are able to select the tile or not. So we can stop for now. I'm gonna start by going in the BP player action and deleting the set selected action we're doing in the begin play. And then I created a new event dispatcher right here on the left, which I named unselected actions changed. We're gonna use this event dispatcher to notify the debug menu without having a reference to it. Then I'm gonna go in the top right corner and add two new inputs to my event dispatcher. I changed both variable types to be BP action and I changed their names to be left click action and right click action. Then we're gonna open the set selected action function to call this callback. And I'm calling it right here, so at the end of my sequence I'm adding a new pin, then I'm calling my callback, passing it the left click and the right click actions. Now we can compile and go back in the button action. In the construct I'm registering my button to my player action callback that we just created, and I'm using an event named unselected actions changed. So every time the selected actions changed in the player action, this event right here is going to be called. And then once this event is called, we're gonna update the background color of the button. For the color, I'm using a select node, which I connected to the same comparison we used before. So if the selected action that is in the player action right now is the same as the action of the button, we want to set the button to be a tint of blue. Otherwise, we leave it gray, the same gray that we had in the button. And I'm actually going to also call my set background color after my construct right here. That way the button is going to be updated as soon as it's created. And now we can compile and go test, I'm gonna press play. Right now I cannot select any tile and my button is not highlighted on the left. If I click on the button, the button is now highlighted and I'm able to select any tile I want. And if I click on my button again, it unselects it and I cannot select any tiles. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. I can select it again and it also works, perfect. And actually, before ending this video, I think it would be a good idea to also deselect the tile when we are deselecting the action to select a tile, because right now, if we deselect the action, the tile still stays selected. So we're gonna deselect it when we are deselecting the action. So we're gonna start by checking what's happening when we click on the button here to deselect the action. So I'm gonna stop and go in my button action. Right here, when I click on the button, I set my selected action. So I'm gonna open this function. And here at the beginning of the function, the first thing we're doing is destroying the actor of the selected action. So we're gonna use that to reset the state of the selected tile when we are destroying the action to select the tile. So let's go in the action select tile. And here what I'm gonna do is go in my function on the left, override and override the destroyed function. So when the actor is going to be destroyed, we're gonna execute the action once again. This time I'm going to split the index and I'm gonna write minus 999 minus 999. That way we're gonna set an index that is invalid when the actor is destroyed. So now we can compile, go back in the level, press play, and if we select the action, we can still select a tile, that's good. And now if we deselect it, it should deselect the tile also. Perfect, now we can reselect it to select a new tile. While it's deselected, we can select a tile, obviously, but when it's selected, we can select a new tile and deselect it like so. Perfect. And I guess that's gonna be it for today. Now that we have the possibility to select which action we wanna execute on the grid, we're now gonna be able to add any type of action in the future. And we're gonna start in the next video by maybe adding some tiles around the grid or maybe removing tiles that were already on the grid and maybe changing the tile types of the tiles that are currently in the grid. But for now, that's good enough. So I'm gonna see you in the next one. So bye bye.